Welcome to the Fantasy Forge. My name is Steve and happy Halloween most likely for most people seeing this. I hope your fantasy days are went well, I guess. I hope you won. I don't think I'm going to I think I'm going to get my first loss this week. So that sucks, but my team overall did pretty well and it looks like there's going to not have been anything else that I could have done. Might be facing the high scorer of the league. So, what can you do some weeks? It is what it is and my Packers are about to probably give me another loss this week, so let's get to this. Luckily today there were not a lot of injuries, and the whole point of this is to try to get through some one big thing, kind of, for each team in each matchup, and just go through those and not take up too much of your time. So let's get moving along with this, starting off with Denver, who beat up on Jacksonville barely. It was a pretty close game the whole way through, 21-17. to And as far as Denver goes, Dulcich is a must-own tight end, probably must-start for a lot of people. And no, you are not dropping Sutton. Just hold on to that boy tightly. He's as good of a waiver wire option as you're going to find, especially after this week. Did I get to that? There were really uh, not too many injuries, so that's a great thing. As far as Jacksonville goes, ETN owned that backfield hard, had 24 rushes for 156 yards, one touchdown, also had three catches on three targets for six yards, so that's good. Would like to see a few more targets for him and for him to get involved in that passing attack a little bit more going forward, but you can't complain after today. And Christian Kirk owners, he did see the most targets on the team, so that's good. This was a very tough matchup, so it was always going to be um, a hope and a prayer for him to have a big week. It's all good. As far as Dallas and Chicago goes, Dallas whooped up on uh, Chicago. The final score there, 45 to 2019, does not really do it justice. Dallas really, really whooped up on them. Had 450 yards of offense. Dak is back, baby. So no more concerns on him going forward. And as far as Chicago goes, it really looks like it has come to a complete split between Herbert and Monty, especially when you consider that you would think when they're coming back from behind, Monty would be kind of that guy. So all the more reason to think that this has come to a true split at this point. Maybe even, maybe it's the tur- the tables have turned here. The tides have changed and maybe Herbert really is the uh, going to be the lead back because once again, you would think that in a game like this, it would have been Monty who would own the backfield. And also you can pretty much trust Justin Fields going forward um, as far as a decent fantasy option. Not too bad. His feet, they seem to have figured out how to use him well in terms of fantasy at least. Now let's move on to Miami versus Detroit, which was a bit of a shootout. Not the highest scoring game, but uh, it definitely had all the elements of a shootout in it where Miami outlasted Detroit 31 to 27. And as far as Miami goes, don't forget that Mostert is made of glass. He could get injured at any moment. There was a bit of a scare early on in this game, so just wanted to give you a reminder to hold on to Edmonds. That's a good start. Third and four. Let's go pack. All right, as far as Detroit goes, Swift was limited today, most definitely. He had 10 touches total, five receptions, five rushes. So, you know, that's part of the reason for his limitation, um, his limited amount of work, but he will be in a shared backfield no matter what the case is. They are aware that Swift is quite injury prone from the start of the season they've said that that's going to be a bit of a split there so don't expect um yeah he's always i think a little bit of a risk it's it's all about the uh high amount of efficiency that he has with his work oh almost picked all right let's move on to new orleans who whooped up on las vegas 24 to 0 obviously had control of this whole game and as far as New Orleans goes, Alvin Kamara had three touchdowns today. So call, told you to calm down last week, Alvin Kamara owners. The touchdowns, there's no reason specifically that they weren't there. Here we found them. So that is great. Mark Ingram did have a knee injury. Don't know how serious that is, but I don't believe he came back into the game after the knee injury. He only had one catch in the game. Hopefully he'll get better soon, but... Great day for Alvin Kamara. I think that was about it. There was something else I was going to bring up for New Orleans, but I really don't think that that's uh, too relevant for fantasy. As far as Las Vegas goes, yikes. They got stomped on, and just to let you know how yikes it is, I believe I saw a little stat that um, as far as the entirety of the game that 
Dak, D- Derek Carr was in there. He, uh, they did not go past the 50-yard line on offense. So, yikes is correct. Now let's move on to Minnesota versus Arizona, where Minnesota beat Arizona 34-26. to And they pretty much had control of this game for the most part. So as far as um, Minnesota goes, they seem to have come into their own and found a balance that's going to work for them going forward. I really liked what I saw as far as just the game plan today. They had 36 passes, 29 rushes. I think that is a very much what they want to be doing. And then as far as injuries goes, there were a couple. Adam Thielen had a knee contusion. If you're not aware, contusion is a bruise, a deep bruise sometimes, especially when you're playing a sport like this. So uh, sometimes those can be a little bit worse than what you think of for a typical bruise and then Irv Smith Jr. had uh, an ankle injury and he will be having an MRI on that from what I'm aware of so I don't know about the severity of that neither does the team obviously as far as Arizona goes the offense is finally getting there I have said for most of the season until last week really that they uh, they suck but they seem to be getting there with more of their pieces in the right spots is definitely a big part of that and I kind of gave a heads up throughout this week that Ertz may not be as dependable of a tight end option as he has been, and I I got that feeling that that's probably going to be true. He is going to be touchdown dependent, and he, I just, I thought we might have gotten a touchdown because my phone went off. Then Philadelphia absolutely stomped on Pittsburgh. 35-13, to Devonta Smith had five targets for 23 yards. Does that sound right? No, he caught five balls for 23 yards. But the positive side is that he did still have eight targets in this game. Just didn't connect on some of those deeper ones, I know. So uh, don't be too concerned. He is a guy that you want to play because of this offense. Unless you're deep at wide receiver and you really have trustworthy guys, then you can play the matchups. But for the most part, it can be every week, any week. So you kind of got to live by the sword, die by the sword with him, in my opinion, because he will win you weeks and as far as Pittsburgh goes uh Jalen Warren did have more rushing attempts than Najee Harris but don't be scared Najee Harris owners if you notice this Jalen Warren got most of those late so all looks pretty good there now Atlanta and Carolina got into a shootout a lot of scoring was late from what I recall in this Atlanta beat Carolina 37 to 34 in overtime Neither of these teams wanted to win the game. I believe Carolina missed an extra point to help put it into overtime. Well, really to put it into overtime, whether they would have won or lost anyways. And then they also missed in in overtime, and Atlanta turned the ball over right away. Just neither team wanted to win, but Atlanta ended up winning. Caleb Huntley has returned. I forgot last week when I said, oh, I guess I was totally wrong on Caleb Huntley, and He's not the better back to own, but he outran Algiers 16 to 14 in this game. And I forgot about the fact that Caleb Huntley was injured coming into last week. So, um, th- you know, that could have been part of his usage for last week, the reason behind it. So I don't know, but he had a 5.7 yard average compared to Algiers 2.8 yard average. So still out efficiencying him. Um, good thing for Algiers is he did catch three of three targets. So that is. Always, always good for running backs to have that. And Aaron Rodgers gets sacked. Now, as far as Carolina goes, the good, the meh, and the good. For DJ Moore here, he caught 6 of 11 targets for 152 yards and one touchdown. He had one of those catches was for 62 yards and a touchdown right towards the end of the game. That is the meh, because without that, he's a 5 of 10 for like 90 yards. Not a terrible game, very much a promising game and a fine game, but a lot of his points did come on one big play in a desperation type throw situation in a game that got kind of out of control. What I'm saying here is these last two weeks have been great for DJ Moore. Hopefully you've been able to capitalize on at least one of them here, but Christian Watson's down. (laughs) Jesus. Ah. But it might be a little bit of a mirage. Might be. And also, the other good is none of his uh, points or anything came in overtime. Christian Watson really looks like he might be pretty hurt. I shouldn't have said there were no injuries this week, huh? Aaron's upset about it. Oh. On to New England, who outlasted, beat Detroit, uh, <laughs> the New York Jets, 22-17. Jacoby Myers had 12 targets in Mac Jones's return here, so there I did... Um, 
notice a trend that Jacoby Myers tends to get targeted a lot more with Mac Jones, and uh, that seems to continue. And uh, Hunter Henry is probably less useful. And then also Devontae Parker did have a knee injury early on in this game, got ruled out. Maybe after, maybe not super quickly, but ended up getting ruled out. So that might be kind of serious. And as far as the New York Jets go, uh, we thought that they might have to go pass heavy without having Brees Hall, and they did in a game that they, you know, could have leaned on the run, but it really wasn't there for them anyways. So uh, the benefactors of that were Conklin, who had 10 targets, I think two touchdowns, and uh, Garrett Wilson had seven targets, did great with them, and also Carter had seven targets. So that, that's great for Michael Carter. Uh, we weren't seeing a lot of running back targets after Joe Flacco left, but that seems to have um, returned. So I guess that might not have been for any specific reason. Elijah Moore only had one target, so that's a bummer. On to Tennessee versus Houston. Tennessee beat Houston 17-10. to on... It was really 17-3. to <laughs> Uh, so, as far as Tennessee goes, Derrick Henry, I really don't need to say more. Just, you can just read it right there. 228 yards. He had a reception as part of that yardage. Not a lot of it. And two touchdowns. Also, for Tennessee, Chig o- 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 Okonkwo. I always want to, like, m- mix and match his last name and first name. Chigo Zim Okonkwo, who is a rookie tight end halfback kind of guy, who I absolutely loved his draft pro- profile on had a 25% target share today. Now, he is someone that I said to keep an eye on at the beginning of this year, as he might be someone who, as the year goes on, he would add a great wrinkle onto this team that I think would definitely benefit uh, the, the offense as a whole. So this is huge. He had two targets today on eight, eight, eight total um, throws. So... Keep an eye on that. Uh, but uh, that's obviously a joke. But um, Chig's awesome. Okay. Now, Houston. They're not awesome. And if you have the ability to, I would sell high on Damian Pierce. If I had more time in my life, I would work on a trade. But I know that my league is hard to trade with, and I suck at trading. So I'm probably just going to stick with him, but I really wouldn't suggest it. I've been saying it for a while now. He makes me super nervous. He's just gotten lucky, like in games like today, and gotten touchdowns. He has one big rush that helped boost all of his his average and everything. I uh, I It's just that offense. It's not him. <laughs> so if you can sell on him, I think that would not be the worst idea. Maybe check out the schedule first. I did not look at the schedule, but does it matter for Houston? Does it? I don't think so. Now on to Washington, who took this right out of Indianapolis's hands. Poor team. Indianapolis is like the Los Angeles Chargers Jr. They just can't seem to win games often, and they lose in the worst of ways. So Washington beat them 17-16. to 16. It's not like Indianapolis dominated Washington, and then all of a sudden it got taken out of the hands. But it was looking pretty good, and then Washington all of a sudden came out of nowhere and torched them and scored real late. So as far as Washington goes, uh, Terry McLaurin's much, much better with Heineke under center. So as long as the Heineke touch the Heineke master is under center, then be happy you have Terry McLaurin, I think. Um, if, if he ends up not being under center and you could trade him away still when that gets announced, do that if you can. On to Indianapolis. Uh, JT did have a 4.8 yard average. He had 76 yards. Unfortunately, that's it. I think he had one target. I don't believe he caught it. So, um, not a great fantasy day, but uh, there he did well. He was efficient. For some reason, the team just didn't run more. The same issue, this is where I had concerns with them coming into this season. This staff just seems to want to throw the ball too much or or not run JT into the ground, at least early on in the season. I don't know. So, um, it, you know, it wasn't like JT didn't do bad. It might just get fixed. I really wouldn't sell low on him. And then uh, San Fran beat, really, really clobbered the Los Angeles Rams. Oh, that's wonderful. Go Singletary. Oh, that's who I'm facing, Singletary. Not a wide receiver. All right, uh, so San Fran clobbered 31-14 to Los Angeles Rams. All uh, the fantasy options on San Fran got involved. As I kind of suggested last week, I think this ball will get spread around quite a bit, and everyone's floors have gone up, but... Um, 
there's only going to be one person to have those ceiling days. Hopefully it's always Christian McCaffrey. And uh, Kittle did have five targets in this game, so not great, not terrible, but he had a good fantasy day in the end. Now let's move on to the Rams. Ronnie Rivers took over as the RB1 today, which to me says that when Kyron Williams comes back, he is definitely going to be taking over that RB1 role. So whenever that is, Look forward to whatever the RB1 is worth in Ramsville. And here was the big, possibly big injury. Cooper Cup had an ankle injury after the game. He was limping, had it wrapped up, said he thinks he avoided anything major. Sounds like they will have an MRI tomorrow on it. So keep your eyes open for that. But um, doesn't, you know just have to follow that through the week. It's probably going to be something that's going to give you a headache throughout this week. And last up, Seattle beat the New York Giants 27 to 13. Metcalf and Lockett both made it through this game. Neither one of them were being used as decoys. They they played a pretty regular game. I I don't know if there's any limitations on them at all, but if there was, it was really not noticeable throughout the game. So yeah, that, that was a good thing. And the New York Giants just struggled in all facets of the game. Defense did do fine, but uh, because of their special team struggles and their offensive struggles, you know, they got, ended up getting scored on enough, but um, they looked fine. So that's a good thing. The New York Giants defense just makes it tough on teams. So that's something to keep reminding ourselves on. They're not a, a smash play um, to go against. And same with the Seattle defense. They're, they're pretty darn good. So that is it for the recap. I will have my rankings videos coming out later in this week. Waiver wire video. Waiver wire video coming out next. So look out for that. Uh, subscribe if you want heads ups on all of those. And I think I had a really good fantasy prediction week. So, I mean, it, it seems like I did pretty darn good this week. So hopefully I benefited some of y'all. And if I did hit that subscribe button as a thank you. I, I would be thankful for that. Buffalo's about to score on Green Bay. Go happen. All right, peace out. Go Pack Go.